Welcome everyone to the Developing Real-Time Bidding Solutions with RTB Kit webinar. My name is Anastasia Valentine and I'm the Head of Marketing at Datacratic. I'll be moderating the session today and wanted to let you know a couple of housekeeping notes. You're now in listen-only mode, but we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar, so don't let that stop you from sending them in when they come to mind. Just send us a quick chat and uh, we will make sure that we get your question in the queue. And again, as a heads up, we have a special invite for all of you that we'll be sharing at the end of the webinar, so stay tuned for that. Now, Mark, can we get to the agenda? Yep. Well, uh, welcome everyone to the webinar. Uh, thanks for coming. So, uh, just going to cover in about 45 minutes uh, a background on RTB Kit. We're going to talk about essentially what problems in the RTB space RTB Kit uh, designs to solve and what sort of trade-offs it makes and uh, what that means for you as someone who's considering building solutions with it a little bit about how it fits against other choices in the market, and then a pretty deep dive on architecture and overall design philosophy of RTB Kit. Uh, actually, there is, I don't think we're gonna have time for demo today, so uh, that bullet is uh, probably inaccurate, and that's our oversight. Oh, no worries. Okay. But, um, so, so Mark, one of the things that I thought about was that um, the folks on the line, they've probably seen you around the RTB Kit um, Googled forum a lot, but they probably don't know a lot of background. So I was wondering if I could just make a quick introduction and give them some background about you. Sure. Cool. So if, in case you didn't know, and a lot of you probably um, may not have had the chance to talk to Mark directly, he has 15 years of experience in a variety of roles in technology, and he brings a range of experience in his current role as head of client solutions here at Datacratic. Now, he works with customers to design, implement, and integrate RTB solutions for them based on the RTB kit and Datacratic's hosted bid optimizer. Previously, he was the VP of Engineering at Magnetic, which offers online advertising managed services, specializing in search retargeting. And before that, he held positions as Associate Director of Architecture at Wireless Generation, now part of News Corporation, and as an, an engineer at Moody's Corp and Barnes & Noble. Hey, Mark, I didn't know all this about you. This is great. Now, Mark has a Master in Computer Science and from New York University and a BA from Columbia University. And don't forget to follow Mark on Twitter at Mark S. Weiss and on GitHub at Mark S. Weiss. So Mark, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thanks so much. So uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna start with just a little bit of background on our TV kit and then we're gonna see how it sort of fits into the market. Uh, and this section also covers sort of the overall design philosophy and the trade-offs that our TV kit is trying to make in addressing our TV. So a little bit of background, RTB Kit uh, was created uh, by Datacratic, who, uh, who is my employer. Uh, we open sourced it about a year and a half ago at the beginning of 2013. And the governance, we, we introduced an uh, open governance model in uh, early, the beginning of 2014. Uh, so this gives you a little idea of kind of the check-in history since the launch of the project. You can see very steady uh, check-in history. And there are a fair number of outside committers at this point, probably about a dozen, although Datacratic is still doing a lot of the core committing and we have typically three or four engineers at a time uh, working in various aspects of RTB kit in terms of fixes and improvements and so on. So it's very core to our business and we continue to support it as well. Uh, and this also shows you sort of a little bit about the governance model. We have made, uh, you know, anyone can be a contributor. We have a normal GitHub pull request uh, workflow and we do recognize regular committers uh, by uh, regular contributors by asking them to become committers. In fact, we just brought in another outside committer uh, this week. This shows you a little about usage of RTV kit around the world. Uh, so we just by looking at uh, statistics um, uh, from Google Analytics, we can see that we've got people downloading it from about 50 countries actually around the world at this point. This is a little bit out of date, although it shows you the sort of the largest countries. And these estimates of uh, active developers are probably low as well at this point. And we know of something like 15 installations in production at this point. And we ourselves have customers using it in multiple countries in Europe and uh, North America. So if you want to get started, you know, not surprisingly, go to GitHub, go to the RTV Kit project. There's tutorials, getting started guides, uh, documentation. There's about more than 50 pages now on the, the wiki there of documentation. 
There's also an AMI you can start with if you want to start working on it in uh, EC2. And the other main area where you can get support is the Google group, which we have uh, people answering questions on every day from, from Datacratic. And there's a fair number of, at least a handful of core outside people who are active on the list as well. So, okay, so that's a little bit about the project. Let's move into sort of what problem RTB Kit is trying to solve, right? So if you look at RTB, you can sort of look in the, 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 lar the at the high level, the problems you need to solve uh, and, and as a spectrum, right? So on the left, you have these more general generic problems, which are the system problems of RTB, which are basically things like it's a, a distributed system that needs to process a lot of transactions, it needs to scale, um, it needs to be very fast in terms of parsing, it needs to have a fast HTTP stack, and so on. There's, those are all, no matter what you're doing with RTB, you need to solve those problems. Uh, in the middle, <clears throat> there are problems like which, uh, which campaigns should see which uh, bid requests, which are selection or filtering problems. Uh, and over to the right, there's the, the prob the, essentially the reason we're all in these auctions, which is figuring out how much this impression is worth to this campaign for this user at this point in time. So there's a value problem there. So if you look at that spectrum, RTB Kit tries to fully address the generic problems to the left, the system problems. In the middle, it gives you a reasonable set of default uh, useful primitives you can work with for things like filtering and routing uh, and also integrating third-party data and making decisioning based on it. And then to the right, it essentially says that's going to be so specific to each business, the computation of value, uh, that uh, what we do is we provide a framework for you to create your own bidding agents, and we'll get into more of that a little later, but that's more left up to the user to customize. So this kind of goes over that now, right? So the system problems are general, and we uh, hope that they're largely solved by RTB kit. The selection problems are in the middle, and they're partially solved. And then the problems to the right, you get basically a default fixed price uh, bidding agent. And if you want to do something more sophisticated, then that's, uh, that's something you need to implement. So how does that position RTB kit in, in, against kind of the choices you're looking at as you consider which, you know, which technology and which platform to, to build your RTB platform on? Well, uh, you know, probably some people on this call are, are here because they're currently running things through an exchange or DSP and they're realizing the limitations of manually managing campaigns that way in a, in a DSP UI or an exchange UI. They're also probably looking at the overhead uh, that's costing them. Um, that's a choice, so it's easy to get started, but it's very hard to, to do anything custom or interesting with that beyond the features that are provided. Um, it's also hard to get your data in and out, and that's a challenge. Um, so then the next choice is, is something that's more of an intermediate hosted solution where um, they perhaps provide you, they bid on behalf of all their customers and it's, a, it's their closed platform, but they provide you more ability to customize your bidding logic and perhaps more ability to get your data in and out. Um, <clears throat> you know, so then it comes to you want to have full control uh, over your bidder you want to have full transparency into how much you're paying for each bid, and you want to have full transparency and usage of your data for targeting and for um, use in your optimization. And you want to have full control over you know, your optimization strategy, and you don't want to be bidding alongside a whole bunch of other people you know, uh, in, a, in some closed system where you don't know what's going on. You want to see all the traffic for yourself. So in that model, you have two choices, really, which are build your own and RTB kit. There's not really another choice in the market right now that offers everything RTB Kit does, although I should mention Google Open Bidder. Um, as far as I know, that's still in beta. Uh, it only offers in ac access to Addix inventory. It only runs in Google Computing Environment. Uh, so it has definitely limitations compared to RTB Kit. So that's kind of a, a technology landscape. So now let's drill into some detail about the uh, architecture and design of RTB kit and how it approaches these problems, the system selection and value problems. The deeper dive we're going to do here is on the system problem. That's because that's the area that RTB kit most thoroughly addresses. So let's start with an overview of the RTB kit architecture. And this is uh, <laughs> full disclosure taken directly off of the excellent uh, RTB kit wiki that has a lot of, of documentation that you should be looking at if you're interested in, in the product. Uh, so what we see here is that there's essentially at the very high level, there's a core and there are plugins. 
And the idea here is the core is doing the core work of running a bidder, which is uh, receiving bid requests, rap, fil doing filtering on them, routing, um, maintaining uh, maintaining the uh, bank, which is the available budget for all running campaigns, uh, and of course uh, providing a framework for your agents that are actually going to calculate your bids. And then the other thing that's happening in the core is besides bids coming in, wins, clicks, and conversions are coming in on the ad server connector is what we call it, and those are being matched. So those are being matched to the previous bids so that uh, when you bid, you know, you, you need to debit the, uh, the bank account for that campaign, uh, but you need to commit that debit only if you get back a win and you know you bought the impression. If you infer a loss, you need to put the money back into the bank. So all of that core activity of dealing with the high level of traffic, doing the parsing, doing the filtering, routing that to the agents, uh, building the bid response, sending that back, uh, and then all of the work to do the bookkeeping to receive the events, uh, wins, clicks, and conversions, and do the, the bookkeeping on the bank, all that happens in the core. What happens in the plugins are essentially the connections to the outside world from the bidder, right? So there are exchange connector plugins that receive bid requests from exchanges. The Augmenter is a plugin that allows integration with third-party data and arbitrary bid logic that can be applied to each bid in the bid stream. The bidding agents are um, actually doing the bidding outside of the configuration there and outside of the core. And there's also uh, interfaces to log out to outside loggers. And we'll also get a little bit in the end of the talk into RTB Kit 2.0, which is development has started on that. And there's a little bit uh, more color to add to this idea, but it essentially builds on this architecture of the core and the plugins. So uh, what do you get from the core then? Um, you get obviously a working bidder system. You've got something that's engineered to uh, scale and to parse very quickly, to horizontally scale uh, all components, including um, you know the exchange connector piece, which is the real time piece facing back to the exchange, uh, and the the uh, post auction service, which is doing the event matching I mentioned. You get very reliable banking, uh, which is not something that you want to um, roll your own and have go go awry because obviously that's your customer's money that you're spending. Um, and you, yet, you know, despite that, you get the ability to customize the core, as we'll see. Okay, so a very important consideration in building a bidder platform that you're certainly going to hear from, you know, your senior management, your CRO, your ad ops people as well. What inventory can I get access to? Uh, the answer right now is pretty good. So there are nine connectors right now that are part of our TV kit. You can see them there including some big ones, um, both in the traditional and mobile space. Uh, in addition, it's notable that bid switch connector gives you access under the hood to about 25 different inventory sources that uh, bid switch aggregates themselves through one standard connector and one standard connection to bid switch. So that's something interesting to consider. Uh, what happens in RTB kit is all of these connectors jobs essentially are to act as adapters to convert that bid request format into an open RTB, uh, open RTB compatible bid request. So drilling into the architecture a little bit, uh, the first place we're going to look is the router. So the exchange connectors run in process in the router and what the router's job is, is the router's just what it sounds like, its job is to take bid requests, um, figure out uh, what campaigns are eligible to receive the bid and pass the bid request on. It also does the necessary, it also coordinates the necessary communication uh, between the banker and the post auction service so that the, the bank is kept up to date as wins and losses come in. The router also um, has time, enforces timeouts and guarantees a timely response back to the exchange. Uh, if you've ever run RTB, you know that uh, exchanges are not happy if you don't maintain a, a, your response time and they'll start doing things like cutting off your traffic and so on. So drilling into the router, we see uh, the main components in the router, which some of which we've mentioned already. There's the central core that is this um, flow of the bid requests through the filtering. And there's communication between that and uh, several services. So on the left, you see the bid requests coming in through the exchange connector. Uh, as the filter pro filtering process happens, bid requests pass to the augmenter, which can also apply filters or um, add fields to the bid request. Uh, and then the request passes to the bidding agents. That's 
essentially, as we'll see in a moment, the, the processing loop. Asynchronously, what happens is the agent configuration service is configuring the router to tell it which campaigns uh, may be eligible for bids. And the banking uh, updates are happening asynchronously. And of course, as wins, clicks, and conversions come in, those flow in asynchronously to the post auction service. This just shows that data flow in a little bit more detail, as does this. So you can see the red is the request response data flow. The blue is the win, click, and conversion event data flow. And again, in a little more, more detail, we see all four of the data flows I mentioned. Uh, bid request, uh, well, five actually. <laughs> bid request, the banking updates, the event matching coming into the post auction service, um, the uh, notification of the bidding agents, and, and uh, the filtering. Sorry, excuse me, and uh, the bidding agent configuration, right? So the purple is the agent configuring the router about which, which, uh, which accounts, I'm sorry, which campaigns are running and um, what filtering those campaigns need to have. Okay, so that covers essentially the flow in a bid request into the system and a lot of the core data flows in the, in the router and in the core. So let's look at what happens with the events flowing back later. You see bids and you bid and of course you win some of the time and that's great. That's why we're doing this. And then the wins come back into the system. So they come into a service called um, the post auction service. Well first, first the, the, uh, they come into the ad server connector which like the exchange connector is essentially an adapter whose job is to receive those events and forward them on. They get forwarded to the post auction service for the matching. So the post auction service is essentially keeping this big map of all the outstanding bids and looking at all the wins, clicks, and conversions coming in, as we can see here. Um, the the uh, data flow is that the events come into the ad server connector into the post auction service. The bids have previously come in, so it matches them. When it matches them, it logs out. It tells the bank, hey, debit or credit that account for that campaign, and it tells the agents, hey, here's a matched event. The reason that the post auction service is talking to the agents is because it's quite likely your bidding strategy, whatever it is, wants to uh, make optimizing decisions based on what has worked. You know, okay, I bid on this and I actually won, or I actually got a click, depending on what your campaign go campaign goals are, whether they're just the ECPM or uh, CPC or CPA, you're going to want to know about those events and your agents and keep track of that state to help uh, support the, the, the bidding that you're doing. Okay, so that's kind of, uh, we've looked at a lot of the uh, data flows into the system, into the core. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the other services now in the core. So the banker is obviously a very important service. It's very important for it to be reliable. Uh, the bank is the single source of truth for your budget over all your campaigns. There's some design that went into this to make it both uh, handle unreliable network state um, and do persistence in a way that very little, you know, only the last second of data is lost in, in the worst case. Um, there's also double entry bookkeeping and, and shadow account bookkeeping being done, meaning that actual commits of spend are uh, happening in a, set, a shadow account and then are committed into the core. Um, and spend is allocated in a way that the all the in-flight bookkeeping is not being done in the core bookkeeping so that um, only when you know that you've won or lost you commit that back to the core. So there's, in addition there's some nice primitives in the code for supporting uh, writing code around this so you get currency classes and wrappers and so on that help you do the math and not have off by 1000 bugs which are bad to have in, when you're keeping track of your customers money. So uh, in addition to just the kind of core technology under, underlying the banker, the other key piece is at the design level because you need to support a lot of use cases. An area where it's very hard to uh, map RTB to, or, or there are challenges in mapping RTB to existing systems are, often are around how, how a business is managing all its campaigns, all its flights, its hierarchies of campaigns, campaign groups, etc. So there's a lot of complexity there. So the way that we address that in RTB kit is at a high level there's just um, these two types of accounts. There's a budget account and a spend account. The budget account is the master that actually is going to um, own the amount of money that's left for a campaign. 
The spend account, as I said, is where uh, all the in-flight spending happens and that, that bookkeeping happens. When, when, uh, when there's uh, changes to be made, they get committed back to the budget. And as we'll see in a moment, this maps to this, as we see here, this maps to a flexible uh, hierarchy that you can set up about how to manage your spend. So essentially, you can set up any tree you want that spends the budget. So you can have this root level that owns all the budget, and you can split it up into multiple flights within one spend, within one campaign, however you want. And then all of that will get replicated out. Your hierarchy of spend accounts gets replicated out to the in-flight um, shadow accounts in the router and the post-auction loop that are, on, that are managing the spend. So you get this flexible system that you can set up just hierarchically, as you see here, any way you want. Uh, the idea is RTV kit's not trying to dictate that. We picked sort of the simplest atomic uh, level of how to manage this so that you can map that to your needs. There's also a REST API that you can use to talk to the banker, which is definitely uh, useful because it, it allows you, for example, to integrate in budget allocation into existing uh, campaign UI you might have and so on. And you can manipulate everything that we just described through the REST API, the, the hierarchy, allocating spend, and of course, reading back state that you know uh, that that's there about uh, uh, which campaigns are configured and how much spend they have available and all of that. So you can integrate. Essentially, this API allows you to integrate this piece in with with some UI management that you might want to build. Okay. So finally, on the system side, let's look a little bit at some of the operations tools that are included. Uh, RTB Kit is instrumented extensively with carbon uh, logging, which is done in a way that um, it samples the, the, the data, it, you can tune how much it samples, the granular, granularity goes down to a second, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of keys in there and there are a lot of aggregates built in. Honestly, uh, the issue with RTB Kit isn't the amount of instrumentation, it's that the, when you run Graphite over this carbon data, which Graphite is sort of a tree viewer and um, dashboard viewer of the data, there's a lot there, there are a lot of keys there, there's a lot to learn. There's a fair amount of that documented on the RTB Kit wiki, here you can see a graphite chart of, of a metric. Um, there's probably 50 or 75 of these keys are, are documented in the RTV kit wiki, but that's definitely an area where uh, there's a learning curve. Okay, so that covers what we wanted to cover on um, RTV kit addressing the system problem. So now let's move into selection and, and then value. So again, selection primarily has to do with a couple things. Basically, we're figuring out for each bid request which campaigns want to bid on it, right? That's the selection problem. So what that means in terms of implementation, and there's traditional uh, ad ops concepts here as well, are that you have certain kinds of filtering. So really what you need is this high-performance filtering pipeline, and you need the right kinds of filters. You need the ability to flexibly design your own as needed. And RTV Kit really attempts to, to address all of that. Uh, so, first of all, there, there's filtering that's available at the agent level, uh, meaning essentially attributes in the bid request uh, that you're going to map to, you know, campaign level attributes, right? Uh, so, a bidding agent here is an agent that's bidding on behalf of the campaign. In addition, there are filters at the creative level. So, if the size doesn't match or the format doesn't match, uh, things like that. And you can configure um, you can configure your agent configuration to handle uh, to have both any any combination of these filters for each of your campaigns. So here we see again this idea of how they break down and and the the order that they execute. So the idea is that there's an optimized order of execution uh, based on making filters perform very well, and the most broad and uh, filters that are going to filter at the most traffic fire first. Um, okay, uh, and then another. there's another kind of filter uh, that there are two more things to mention about filtering. One is a slide that I took out just for time purposes, but there are nice, um, there are nice helper classes that are part of RTB kit that let you build your own filters, uh, and you can really implement kind of arbitrary custom filtering as you'd like. Uh, there's, at a high level, there are notions of include and exclude, so you can essentially combine and and or logic as, as you need to. Um, those are static filters, though, that are going to act on uh, whatever data is available in the bid request. There, there are also, you, you know, it's very common to also want to use third-party data or your own first-party data, outside data, outside of the bid request, typically related to users. 
uh, to support filtering as well. This is where the augmenter component of RTB kit uh, comes into play. And the augmenter is one of the, I think, excellent features of RTB kit. It's, uh, what happens is each bid request passes through the augmenter. The augmenter um, guarantees that a five millisecond timeout will be enforced. Um, it provides its own thread pool to talk to outside data. So what happens is this is a place where you can run any arbitrary business logic you want to look at every bid request and either add new fields to it, which we'll get into a little more later, or um, add fields that are there to trigger a filter action. So you can have filters that are dynamic based on business logic in the augmenter and your own data and or your own data and act on those. Um, so let's just say you want to filter out all users who already have installed your app. You know, that would be a perfect example of this kind of use case. So the augmenter could do a look, you know, at every hour or whatever you upload your list of uh, device IDs and you do a lookup on each bid request and you set a filter in the augmenter so that you're only targeting new users. So that's an example of, of the power of the augmenter, simple example. So again, I talked about a fair amount of this. This is the augmenter architecture. Uh, you can see that you've got this, um, you got the bid request flowing through and you've got the thread pool and so on. So the value problem, as I mentioned, is uh, lightly addressed by RTB Kit. Um, so the idea is that uh, RTB Kit gives you a framework to configure bidding agents and it gives you um, essentially an API to create them. So there are base classes there and there's an ex there are example agents there that when you set up RTB Kit and run the demo stack, you, ha you will see the fixed price agent running. So you have a full agent included in the box. It's just that its, log its bidding logic is just fixed price and therefore not sophisticated. So from that basis, you can then um, develop your own agents. Um, so the basic idea here is that the agent configuration service is the service that tells the router and your agents about everything they need to know um, to make sure the bids get to the campaign, to, to the uh, agents that are representing the campaigns and that the agents know uh, what they need to know to bid. So the creatives, what filters, and what ad markup uh, needs to be passed back in the bid response. So there are also, as I mentioned, the tools there to implement your own bidding agents. So right now what's supported is C++ or JavaScript for agents. I, note, I should note the rest of um, RTB Kit essentially right now supports C++, although um, there's one exception to that which, which uh, I'll mention in a moment. Um, so in addition, you have the um, there are, there are methods there that, that you would override and implement that support your custom bidding logic and also allow you to support a cost model that, for example, allows you to include the notion that you're paying for data on top of each win and you want to include that in the cost of the impression. Um, in addition, there are methods there that you can implement to support your own pacing. Uh, okay. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, augmenters are also related to this. So um, the other thing augment augmenters can do is besides adding a field to the bid request that will trigger a filter, you can use them to add any fields you want to the bid request which are then available to the bidding agent. So what this lets you do is use your data to pass to the agent so that the bidding strategy can then act on that added data. Uh, so a typical use case for this would be you want to optimize by um, bidding more aggressively for users that you know are in a certain segment. So the bid request passes to the augmenter, the augmenter adds the segment to the bid request, and then the bidding agent sees that. And you're doing that based on the logic in the augmenter and based on um, the data that you have available at that time. So essentially, this allows you to arbitrarily um, use your own data in, in uh, any optimizing strategies you want to implement in the bidding agent. Okay, I think we're ahead of time, actually. I perhaps cut the deck a little too much, but this will leave us time for, for more questions. So um, this just shows a little bit about where the project is headed. Um, we know, noting some things that were on the roadmap the last time I gave this talk, gave this talk earlier in the year that are, have now been delivered. 
So that at that time, there were known scalability problems in the post-auction service, which have recently been addressed. Uh, there, there's now the ability to horizontally scale the, the post-auction service as needed, um, just through simple, uh, simple round-robin kind of uh, routing there. Um, and in addition, the, this is a big, a big, um, big feature that supports the larger strategy that uh, we're pursuing with our TV kit uh, this year, uh, the HTTV bidding agent. So what this is is the first um, plug-in API that isn't that doesn't use a zero MQ and isn't really more tightly coupled to the RTB kit core and the RTB kit code base. Um, this is an, an HTTP interface for passing bid requests. Um, well, what it right? So what it is is it's a component that runs in the RTB kit core, which forwards bid requests to an HTTP interface. So what this lets you do is implement any any HTTP any bidding agent you want in any language you want as long as it can accept HTTP incoming messages and respond with HTTP, which essentially means any language or platform that you want to work in uh, these days. You know, of course, your, your implementation still needs to be fast and, and so on, but it, it really opens things up. And that's really our goal with a lot of what we have on the roadmap for the rest, you know, for the rest of the year with our TV kit. The idea is that uh, we want to take all these in, in uh, plug-in points, these integration points, and have similar HTTP APIs so that we can support third-party development of augmenters, of loggers, of analytic tools plugging into data from loggers, um, and uh, for ingesting data for augmenters. So the, uh, the, the, you know, the hope here is that we can develop third-party marketplaces around these value-add functions so that our TV kit in the marketplace serves more like a core bidder platform that uh, supports these plug-in marketplaces where, you know, outside vendors can come in and add value and provide value to users of RTB kit. And so we have this open bidding ecosystem uh, with a lot of market participants. So that's the dream. And, and the first step in getting there are opening up these APIs through HTTP so that there's a lot more flexibility in terms of integration. Okay, so um, here's a, you know, more information about it about our TV kit if you want to get started uh, and uh, this deck should be available to everyone uh, afterwards so that you can follow these links and there's a little bit about us so what do we do uh, we're essentially a machine learning company that has a platform that does real-time decisioning we're in a couple different markets with a couple different products one of them is in fact uh, related to RTB so we have a, an opti uh, RTB optimi uh, optimized bidder that does uh, a bid optimizer, excuse me, and that does have clean integration with RTB Kit or any other bidder uh, that you might want to work with. So if you're interested in any of that, you can find out more about us there. And I'd also like to let everyone know there's going to be an RTB Kit meetup in London in just a couple weeks, and the information's here. It's on September 4th. Anyone who's you know uh, anywhere in that area, we'd love to have you come out and meet us. And um, I guess. That's all I wanted to cover. So if uh, there are questions out there from anyone, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, um, um, Mark, I'll jump in if I can. Sure. So um, just a note on the RTB kit meetup. You notice that uh, we didn't have an address there for you. So what we will be doing is sending everyone an invitation um, as a follow-up email. So you will be receiving that as well. And um, if by any chance you do want to host your own RTB, RTB kit meetup um, in your location, definitely give us, a, give us a ring or send us a quick note at info at datacratic.com um, because we do want to make sure that we keep connected with our community and give you the support that you need. Now we're ready to take your questions. There's quite a few already in the queue. So if you have one, go ahead and send us a question using the question feature or raise your virtual hand and we will open up your line and you can ask your question live. Now I'll take the first question. The first question that came in from a couple of people during the presentation was, will we receive a copy of the presentation? And the answer is absolutely. We'll be sending you um, a video, a version of the, the presentation, as well as a PDF copy. We're also going to be posting it on SlideShare, so you'll be able to access it there as well. Now, um, the next question is definitely for you, Mark. Um, the next question <laughs> is, <laughs> is there support for languages other than C++? Right, so that's a great question. Um, so the answer is partially right now. Uh, 
you can write bidding agents in JavaScript or CoffeeScript, of course, um, or C++ right now. So they're essentially their language bindings for JavaScript for writing bidding agents. In addition, I mentioned that if you use the HTTP bidder interface component now, you can implement bidding agents in any language you want and connect them to RTB Kit Core using the bidder interface, which can then forward those on. Uh, right now, that's the extent of other language support. As RTB Kit 2.0 development progresses and HTTP interfaces become available for other plugin points, there should be uh, that, that would enable uh, implementation of those types of plugins in other languages. So we're keenly interested in doing that for augmenters and for loggers. Um, exchange connectors are probably a little further down the list, but that's that's the answer to that as of today and looking ahead. Okay, the next question, Mark, is what are some of the key operational considerations when thinking about RTB? Right, so, you know, it breaks down into a couple areas. You need to look at um, hosting, and, you know, often we see customers hosting in the cloud. Uh, there can be reasons to want to host in your own data center um, if you have very strict latency requirements uh, or the, you know, and or the opportunity to host near a, a key exchange partner. Uh, inventory source partner. Um, so that's one area. And then related to that, closely related to that, is sort of figuring out uh, a rational economic model for your RTB platform. So you want to look at how many win how much money you're spending, how many campaigns you're running, how many, from that you can assume, let's say you're going to filter about, you're going to, that about 10% of your campaigns for any bid are eligible and that uh, you're going to bid on about 10% of those and win about 10% of those that you bid on. So you're looking at winning something like one in a hundred of bids. So you can take the number of wins you want in a month and back into a number of total uh, incoming bid requests you need to see. Um, that gives you some notion of uh, how many hosts you're going to need. Uh, so, you know, typically we see RTB get installations supporting something like 10,000 QPS in the cloud. Uh, and that's, you know, something that, that we at Datacratic uh, uh, that's in range of what Datacratic achieve as well. So you're looking at, you know, from that you can then start to figure out, okay, so I'm going to need this many hosts to run this much traffic, to run this many wins, how much is this going to cost me? A rule of thumb is that you want to be spending about 5% of your um, your campaign spend on oper on hosting and operations, not including, operate you know, operations personnel, but just on the, the hosting piece of it. Great mark. Hopefully yeah. that's uh, that's a rough. I mean that's those are all rough numbers. It's good to look on the Google group. There's been some more detailed discussions around costing this out, um, and that's that's another resource. That's great, Mark. Now we've got um, three or four additional questions and one person to open the line with. Um, the next question is: Does RTB Kit use or have hooks into KV database like Redis? Ah, that's a great question, and I should have probably covered that. So in fact. The Augmenter ships with the Redis adapter, uh, so and it has been in there for almost since the beginning or the beginning of the project. Uh, so the answer is yes. I also know of other customers in production using uh, Aerospike, uh, which is another, you know, widely used in ad tech, uh, similar KV technology. That's a commercial technology, but they actually have open sourced it now, and there's a free version as well. Excellent. Now, just a reminder, we've got a little bit of time here, so we'd love to take more of your questions. We have a few of them in the queue, but again, if you want to send us a question using the question feature, that would be great, or raise your virtual hand, and we will go ahead and open your line. Now, the next question is, um, are there any requirements or guidelines to integrate a homemade DMP to RTB kit? Mm. Um, interesting question. So, I don't think there are a lot of strict guidelines. Um, you know, the main consideration is going to be that you you need the data store that you're using in, in the Augmenter to be very performant. So, you know, that relates to the previous question. You're going to want to pick an appropriate technology like a Redis or an Aerospike. And that means that the design considerations that you're looking at are essentially how to map uh, the data that you have into a sort of a, a key value schema. So typically you're looking at a transformation where you, um, for example, if you're using user data, your keys are user IDs or device IDs, and then you have, you know, a typical implementation might be just a long array of features 
that you then look up. So with one with one lookup, you bring back all the data that you need, and you process that in memory in the augmenter. You want to really minimize uh, data access, and you want to use a fast data store. But beyond that, um, there aren't you know strict guidelines because our because the DMP portion of it is essentially outside the scope of of RTB concerns and of the bidder itself. You know what you really want to do is. Um, there, you know, we're thinking more about once the data is there, uh, how do we act on it? I'd say another consideration you should think about pretty hard in any data integration project like this is how fresh you need the data to be, uh, because there's a lot of costs associated with, and you know, operational costs and and pain with data integration in general. So, you know, for example, if you can update your data once a day or once an hour and have excellent performance and, and influence your campaigns adequately with that, you know, start with that instead of saying it needs to be every five minutes, um, you know, because that's going to put load on your data store too. All the incoming writes from behind are competing with uh, the high volume of reads coming in from, uh, from the front, from the bid requests. Excellent, excellent. Now we have a, a call-in question from Ravindra. Ravindra, we're going to open your line here. Ravindra, go ahead. Hello. Hi, Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, quite good. I, I want to know about the load balancing factor. What about in RTB? They're handling themselves or the server will handle Amazon server? Right. So RTB kit itself doesn't, doesn't ship with that. So you can kind of think of the system boundary here as the exchange connector endpoint, right? Meaning yeah. there's, a, there's some process listening on a port that is receiving the bid request. Um, it's very typical to put load balancing in front of that. You know, we ourselves use HA proxy and have mm -hmm. had great success with that. And that's, I think, a typical choice for these kinds of stacks in ad tech. You know, that I do think some people use might uh, some people use Nginx to proxy as well. Um, you know, those are I know those are choices that customers have made, and and I know that we we ourselves use HA proxy. So is there any uh, means, uh, reliable solution in front of you right now? Means, uh, uh, many of the companies already implemented, right? So is there any reliable means uh, pretty good? Is there any, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Uh, I'm, I'm saying about the, which one is the most reliable one? Oh, to use for load balancing? Uh, I mean, I... I can speak to my personal experience, which is that in the last four years, over two jobs, I've used HA proxy, and it's uh, I've, the only time I ever had issues with it was uh, when we had a very large uh, whitelist that we were doing lookups in memory against, and we needed more RAM on the server. <laughs> I mean, other than that, it's never coughed once in the last four years that I've used it. So, I mean, I do think based on my own experience, it's a good choice. As always, I caveat that by saying your mileage may vary in your situation, and it's appropriate to investigate the tech, the, the technology choices, and probably do some prototyping and load balancing yourself in your environment. Um, but if you want to start with with a, you know, what I think is a relatively proven choice, HA proxy is a good choice. Yeah, thanks a lot. One more question, last question, please. Sure, of uh, course. The RTB kit will provide the competitive uh, matrices as well, just like loss impression, something like that. The RTB kit repo? I didn't quite follow that. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question. Uh, the question is yep. uh, whether through RTB kit we can get the loss impression uh, matrices oh. or not. Last impression, just like through ad right. rank or through Got it. Or... Yeah. So yeah. So what happens is uh, when the when uh, wins are reported to you know uh, the ad server connector, it's going mm -hmm. to automatically forward. Well, not on. I think it is automatically configured, but certainly you can subscribe to that event from your logger, so you can then log that wherever you want to log that. And then it's also for, going to forward that uh, win event on to the post auction service so that uh, the post auction service can tell your bidding agents about it and it can tell the banker about it, tell the router about it, which can tell the banker about it. So basically, when a win comes in, you can log it and then also you can find out about it where you're doing your bid strategy and then also your, uh, your campaign budgets are going to get properly debited or credited. 
Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, sure. Ravindra. All right, the next question is about logging. We would like to log every bid request we receive. Where would you log it? On every Exchange Connector? Oops, sorry about that. What happened? I lost my slideshow there. Uh, so the, the first thing I would say is I would, to some degree, caution people who want to log every single bid request. Um, I mean, while it is possible, it's a performance challenge. You know, a typical um, RTB system is going to be looking at something between, you know, five and, say, 200,000 bid requests a second. I mean, our, that's a range of numbers I know of in production among customers and folks I've talked to and systems I've worked on. So that's a fair amount of logging. It's a lot of I.O., and particularly if you're running in the cloud, it's a lot of I.O. Um, that said, uh, if you want to do it, um, you can do it. The loggers run on a separate thread, so they're not running on the Exchange Connector real-time thread, um, which somewhat protects the, the Exchange Connector from from the load. But what happens is, yeah, you can uh, subscribe. There's a switch. There's a configuration that you can set in RTB Kit, which will turn on logging of every bid request. Uh, you know, it's intended more perhaps for debugging purposes and so on. But you can turn it on, run in production, and uh, that's obviously you, um, a choice you can make. And what what will happen then is the logger will automatically be subscribed to to log every bid request as it comes in, and it's going to be from either the exchange connector or the router. I'm not exactly sure ex where that logging message gets fired from. Probably from the router after the exchange connector has parsed the bid. Okay, the next question, Mark, I'm just going to read it as it, as it reads here, um, being mm -hmm. the marketing person. Um, does RTB Kit 2 support API to serialize bid requests into things like Google Protobuf to bidding agent? Uh -huh. um, so that's not quite the goal of RTB Kit 2.0. So Protobuf um, is, is, you know, the Google binary serialization format. So where that's supported is in the ADEX connector. Um, and beyond that, right now, we're not looking at using Protobuf as a generic serialization format. It's been talked about. Um, but right now, you know, the internal communication through the different components and the external interface we're looking at is JSON HTTP, just because that's much, that's more widely used and more standard, although, you know, there are certainly advantages to the compactness of Protobuf um, and so on. But right now, that's uh, that's the that's what we're currently considering. Okay, and I'll take the next question. The next question is, are you hiring? And the answer is yes. So if you <laughs> want to um, look at our, our career page, it's at datacratic.com slash careers, and we are hiring people in um, New York City and in Montreal in various capacities, right from the, the developers team, data scientists, and then some. So definitely check that out. Now, the next uh, question for you, Mark, is which machine learning methods do you use in your decision service? Hmm. So, you know, that's probably a little out of the scope of this conversation. I think the best thing to do for folks who want more information about our decisioning service is uh, to contact us, you know, through our website. Uh, there's some documentation there and more information about that there. And... Um, you know, my contact information is also, you know, available. So if you want to reach out to me directly and I can route you to the right people for more information about our optimization product, I'm happy to do that. The next question is, are there plugins, open, open source or paid, for campaign management, pacing, and frequency capping available? Right. Um, so the answer is kind of no to those. So the campaign API support is essentially what you have is that agent configuration service there and implementing an API on top of that is, is sort of left up to the customer. There is one open source tool that does that, I believe, and if you look in the RTB Kit project under, um, or on the RTB Kit, either on the website under resources or ecosystem, there should be links to that. Uh, there are links to third parties that have provided tools. Um, as far as pacing, um, Again, what you have is you have uh, essentially the function that you can implement. And uh, what was the third one? It was campaign management pacing and... Campaign um, management. Oh, let me just get back to it. Sorry about that. 
no worries. Um, campaign management, pacing, or frequency capping? Right. Frequency capping, there's actually an example of how to do that uh, using the Augmenter right on the RTV kit wiki. So it is something you need to implement yourself, but there's a full example there that should provide a fair amount of guidance. Right. Now the next question is, if we set bid probability to 1, would we have performance issues or any other kind of issues? Well, um, I don't know about performance issues. That's going to depend on a lot of other things happening in your system, but certainly your agents are all going to be um, trying to bid every time. But, re but realize that bid prob of 1 doesn't mean that every bid's getting to every agent because before that happens, all of the filtering to figure out which campaigns are eligible is fired. So that's actually a much bigger factor uh, in determining how much load there is on whatever hosts are running your bidding agents, uh, is essentially how much traffic reaches them. Um, what it's going to do more is, I think, wreak havoc with any kind of uh, optimization strategy that you might have in terms of bidding because, um, you know, the core idea in really in RTV in general but in sort of any approach, even a relatively primitive approach to getting more uh, yield, you know, more margin out of it and more yield and more performance is to be selective. Like a fundamental truth with definitely with desktop inventory and still I think to a fair extent with mobile even though there's a couple order of magnitude less total inventory it looks like is that there's an abundance of inventory. So you want to be selective. Like, Almost any strategy that you're going to implement in your agent, the idea is to be, figure out which ones I do want to bid on out of the ones I don't. Um, so it's more, the, the bid prop is more around, it's a slider that's letting you control that, how selective you're being for that agent, for that bid request. Well, actually, how selective you're being sort of as a baseline across all the bid requests you see. So hopefully that somewhat answers the question. The next question is, is adding new bidding agents scalable? Um, right. So that's frankly an area where there's still some scalability concerns. Um, you know, where we've heard about issues are when folks got up to, like, thousands of agents. Um, and I think the question asked there is, why do you need thousands of agents? Um, you know, it. What one pattern we see with customers is that you know, when you're not doing RTB, if you're manually managing campaigns and you're, for example, you're doing that in a UI and an exchange, you end up with primitive tools sometimes for optimizing because you have to do these things manually based on high level things like uh, segments and um, so on. So what ends up happening often is people artificially divide the budget for a campaign into many, many, many sort of pseudo child campaigns or flights or whatever they call them, and then each of those they can ta use different targeting strategy, particularly in the campaign, to figure out what's working and so on. So to apply all these different segments to different sort of uh, audience segments to all these, for example, different subdivisions of a, of a campaign budget. If that's the reason why you need many, many agents, you can actually avoid that in RTV kit by, um, you know, having an optimization strategy in your agents that learns what's working by looking at all of the available traffic for that campaign and uh, learning what's what's predictive of of the events you're trying to get to, which might be clicks or conversions, and so on. So that's where you know an RTV optimizer um, would come into play there and help you, you know, essentially map maybe a few different bidding strategies per campaign and not need to have thousands of, of agents. The next, next question is with regards to implementation. What is the mm -hmm. ballpark in terms of implementation? time frames, days or weeks. I know it varies depend, depending on how familiar and skilled an engineering team you have. And what sure. is your best case implementation guidance? Sure. Totally fair question. Uh, so the best case that we've seen, uh, we recently worked with a customer and, you know, best case in the sense that we've been working with this technology several years ourselves um, and got them into production in about six weeks. Um, and that includes integration with the inventory source and, you know, all in with the ad server and with, at, in fact, in this particular case, our bid optimizer um, and so on. Uh, I think it's fair to expect something on the order of three or four months as a good, um, you know, 
fairly aggressive number, um, depending on the skill of your team, the resources you have, your familiarity with you know Unix distributed development with, with high volumes of HTTP traffic and and so on integrating outside traffic from outside sources, working with a relatively challenging C++ code base, all those are considerations with RTB Kit. I think you definitely, um, you definitely need a core group of skilled engineers, and if you have that, it's not unreasonable to expect to get it done in several months. Excellent. Okay, this is a this is a long one, Mark. So, so bear with me here. When there are multiple bidding agents, I believe RTB Kit runs an internal auction to decide the bid response to send to the exchange. RTB mm -hmm. Kit is a solution for the buy side, obviously, but could RTB Kit also be used on the sell side as well? Hmm. So that's a really interesting question, and it's actually something that we've been batting around a little bit here as well. I think the answer is right now, it's somewhat purpose built you know, in terms of some design decisions and semantics of, of the classes and the names of methods and all this sort of thing to that, it, you know, to be demand side product, but there isn't anything preventing it from being used on the sell side. I mean, in, in essence, what it's doing is, gen, you know, is generic. It's taking an adjacent description of a bid. It's handling that. It's doing filtering on that. It's passing that to some component that determines some value, notion of value of that and sends back, you know, a prediction of the, the price it wants to pay. So, you know, if you had a sell-side model where, for example, you're a network and you're looking at all of your inventory and you're exposing that to, um, you know, you exposing that to bidders directly, that's a sell-side model that could work. So if you had a connector, exchange connector to your inventory, and then on the other side of that you have um, bidders that are uh, have agents representing them, you know, in your RTV kit system, you could basically create a direct pipe um, that was sort of a closed S, S you know, uh, supply side model. Um, I think with some work, you could adapt what's there to have to, to use on the sell side, for example, to more directly look at, you know, um, optimizing yield. But out of the box, I don't think it's a yield optimization solution right now. Um, I think it's a start. The next question is, what is the size of the cluster to support 10K QPS to keep up with the SSP's response time guidelines? So 10K QPS isn't unreasonable. Um, I think you can do that with one you know, relatively beefy uh, Amazon host for the real-time piece. You know, it's typically people then split off the agent to, into a second host, and the agents are um, probably don't need as much CPU, although it depends a lot on what you're doing. They typically are going to have a lot of in-memory state that they're looking at, so they, you know, you may want a fair amount of RAM on that box. Um, so you can probably get by with, and then sometimes people want the banker on a separate host or something like that just because um, they're protecting it from anything that happens on the real-time host. So I think you can probably get by with, say, three to four hosts for something like that. You might end up splitting the traffic, but at 10K, you're right around the line where you, you may or may not be okay and you may want to split. And then maybe a load balance or two. So four to six hosts is a reasonable round number for that kind of uh, amount of traffic. But and just, you know you might be able to get away with less. You, as as always, you want to actually try to test this and um, you know, and see how things actually work for you. Just a reminder to everyone, we have just a couple of questions left. So if you do have questions, go ahead and get them in the queue by raising your virtual hand or sending us a question using the question feature. The next one coming up is: Is the banker something that needs to be upgraded for production, like the frequency augmenter needs to be um, beefed up for production, and was provided as an example? Oop, here we go. Or does the banker implement real use cases, and most use cases can be used out of the box? Yeah, the banker shouldn't really need a lot of customization other than um, the idea that you need to figure out the, the hierarchy that maps to your campaign hierarchy. Um, but, you know, I don't really know of a lot of people on the group or through our customers that have had to go in and do customization of the core banker, and that's a good thing, I think. I would, 
you know, in general, we somewhat discourage that because um, there are some edge cases that we've thought through and actually have been burned on and so on that, um, you know, it's good to have that already figured out for you. Next question is, is there a frequency cap? Right, so I guess that came up earlier. Uh, there's nothing built in. Again, there is an example on the RTB kit uh, wiki on the GitHub, um, RTB kit GitHub project page that walks through an implementation of a frequency cap using the augmenter. So the next question is, can we pay Data Craddock to have 24 seven support? And is there a plan for us to move into that business? Hmm. Um, so that's perhaps a little outside of my realm to decide uh, as head of uh, client solutions. But uh, what I can say is right now we don't offer a hosted bidder solution. Um, as to whether or not we might ever move into that business, I, I can't say. Uh, it's not something I know of that's in our immediate plans. And this is the last question on the list currently. So again, if you have any questions and get them into the queue by using the question feature or raising your hand. The last question in the queue here is, what is the average response time for a bid request in RTB kit? Well, that's going to depend. That's one of those questions that I feel comfortable saying it depends, <laughs> um, <laughs> because it really depends on many factors. So, But rather than just answer that way, we can just briefly go look at what those factors are. So the, the dominating factor in the overall response time is going to be the latency between the exchange and your bidder. Um, which is going to depend on how close they are, right? Basically, uh, it's just uh, the, how far the electrons have to travel over a wire. So, um, you know, that's something like 30 milliseconds from Chicago to New York and 50 or 60 from LA to New York, something like that across North, uh, North America, East to West. Um, RTB kit itself in, well, no, so right, no, that, no that's, that, that's basically the answer. Uh, RTB kit itself shouldn't add more than, you know, uh, several milliseconds of computation, and there's a, a five millisecond timeout on um, on the augmenter. I think the default timeout on the router, ooh, I'm not sure. It's maybe five, maybe ten. So it shouldn't add much beyond the, the network latency, and, the, and there's a configurable timeout set in RTB kit that, that you can manage. Um, there. The next question is, is there a recency control? As an example, the bidder controls how often we bid for a user based on when we serve an impression. It's not exactly right. a frequency cap, but uh, more in lines of frequency control or recency no, control. No, for sure. Understood. So again, uh, you know, it's the same kind of pattern as with um, frequency cap. So where you're acting dynamically on user-based data and that data is changing over time independent of the bid request stream and you're not acting just on attributes that are in the bid request stream, the basic model for implementing anything like that is through the augmenter. So the idea is that you're going to have a, a data store there where you're uploading that user data periodically, say once an hour, once a minute, however recent, whatever kind of recency window you're trying to target there. And then as each bid request comes in, you can look up for that user ID or device ID in the bid request, what's my recency data that I have for this user. And then your augmenter can implement the business logic to execute on that. So the, the pattern for implementing that would be quite similar to a frequency cap. Okay, the next question is going back to Ravindra. Ravindra, your line is open. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, sorry again. <laughs> no, that's fine. So Happy my to question help you. is Yeah, my question is ABX is not supporting any frequency capping and recency. So how it will help? Who is, is this a uh, certain inventory source that isn't supporting it? Uh, at the X, Facebook, yeah, got it. yeah, yeah, got it. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, the thing is that the frequency and recency, that's going to be based on your audience data, right? So if you can keep track of, you know, when the, when the um, for example, when the, uh, when the wind comes back mm -hmm. to uh, RTB kit, the exchange yeah. connector, I mean, sorry, the ad server connector uh, win event includes a user ID field, or I think it does, because mm. I get confused sometimes by our internal format versus that. We may have just taken it out, actually. But, um, you know, the way you'd want to handle that is you'd want to keep track of that yourself. So let's say in your ad unit, 
you, you could have a macro that you fill in for the user ID or something like that, and in your ad unit, you have a tag that logs it. You'd need to figure out a way to record the wins and associate them with your users. But given that, you know, you could implement the frequency cap in the augmenter and, you know, uh, do it for yourself if, you know, the exchange isn't doing it, right? Yeah, but the, the, the problem is uh, they are not supporting. So how um, we can... Well, that, okay. you, you, you know, they don't, like, you have the ability, so in the bid request, you're going to have a user ID or device ID, right? So you can decide to filter and not bid on that bid request if the user for that bid request is someone who is above a certain frequency for that campaign, you know? So, like, let's say you have, you're running two campaigns and you have one user, okay? You're running campaigns A and B and you have user one, right? And you yeah. want to hold you only want to show user one the ad from campaign A and B once each, right? So if you record that you show you had a win on you for user one for campaign A, and you then that data you put that data in your augmenter, then the next bid request comes in on user one. You do an exclusion filter on campaign A, so he's only eligible to see campaign B now. Well, you know, then you win on campaign B. You record that. You put that data in your augmenter. The next time that come that user, you see that user, you have no eligible campaigns. You filter on campaigns A and B. Uh, yeah. right. So, that. so independent of what what the kind of what the problem for you is that you're still seeing traffic for the exchange that you know you don't care about, and you know you're operationally then you have to handle that bid stream. But the but you know it, that's you can still implement the filtering that you want dynamically based on the state that you have for that user. Mm. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. You're great. Sure. No, that's fine. No problem. Glad to help. Yeah, thank you. Great. Okay. You know, I think that uh, we're we're good to go. I think that we have no more questions in the queue. Uh, with that said, I want to thank everyone for coming out today for our very first webinar on the RTV kit. And uh, we will be doing these periodically in Mark. It sounds like uh, your Q&A session was definitely in demand. So maybe that's something that we can do periodically as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. And we can use that as a way to sort of update people on uh, what's happening with RTV kit and in the community as well. Great, great. Well, everyone, I just wanted to let you know that you will be receiving a follow-up email from us um, with a link to the recording as well as a link to the PDF and to our slide share. You'll also be receiving an invite to our RTB kit meetup in London on September 4th, which you're all invited to attend. And we will be doing RTB kit meetups all over. So um, our last one was in New York City. We had a great time meeting everyone. So if you do want to host one in your neck of the woods, go ahead and give us a uh, drop us a line at info at datacratic.com. Thanks again and uh, wishing you a great day. Take care.